Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast with your host, Mike Campion. If you are passionate about the cleaning industry, you are in the right place. Love what you hear? Spread the word and tell the cleaning world this is the place to be. Want more? Check out www.growmycleaningcompany.com for free online video trainings, free ebook downloads, free blog posts, and of course, all the podcast episodes. Everything you need to grow your cleaning company is at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the Grow My Cleaning Company podcast, the place for everything you need to grow your cleaning company. If you love the show, and I know you do, be a pal and tell a friend, because if you don't, I'll have big, sad puppy tears coming out of my face. Today, we are chatting with Kaylin Westlock from Busy Bees Cleaning Company. Busy Bees Cleaning Company started in May of 2014 with just Kaylin and her husband, Andreas, uh, after they were both laid off from their respective jobs and in desperate need for cash. They came up with the name for the business, which apparently has been changed twice since then, and their target market. They started primarily in the residential cleaning services, private homes, but have since branched out into all sorts of stuff, including buildings, offices, remote uh, oil field housing, move out, special occasion, vacation rentals, window washing, carpet cleaning, even lawn care. They've got five employees. And if you want to reach out to Kaylin and her staff, you can get a hold of them at busybeescleaningcrew.com. That's B U Z Y B's Cleaning Crew.com. Kaylin, say hello to Cleaning Nation. Hello, Cleaning Nation. Thanks for listening today. <laughs> I I know the answer to this, but I'm dying to let uh, Cleaning Nation out there hear what's shaking. Where are we speak? Where am I speaking to you from, young lady? I'm on the southern peninsula of Alaska. And right now, we're coming to you in December of 2015, late December, coming up on the new year. What is the time? It's, uh, I'm looking out my window, and it's blue skies and desert mountain. What, uh, what's going on outside of yours? Well, we're having a pretty mild winter right now, so I'm well happy. It's probably around 40 degrees here, above zero. Really? 40 degrees? Mm-hmm. I'd say around 37, 38. I'm in Phoenix. I bet you it's only yeah, 50. So our snow is mounting. <laughs> our snow is mounting. The snow fires are not getting very good uh, work this year. So how big of a town do you live in? Uh, it's, it's, I think it's the perfect size of town I live in. It's not like a little small community where everybody knows your business and it's not a huge city where, uh, you know, nobody knows you and nobody cares who you are. So, like Phoenix. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know about Phoenix, but it's, it's nice. It's, a, you know, people care. There's a lot of community here and uh, I'd say it's an average of in the um, winters, probably around 30 to 35,000 population in the summers. It's a tourist mecca because the Kenai River runs through here and the salmon come through here and people that love to fish uh, come up here and drones and that's one of my big businesses in the summer. It's pretty vacation rentals. I Beautiful. make a lot of money doing it. <laughs> that's awesome. So are you guys a fishing family? Mm -hmm. A what? Are you guys a family? Family? Oh my you goodness! My <laughs> that's how my husband came over to Alaska. He's from Germany and from Furstenwald, and which used to be East Germany. And uh, he used to come here fishing and uh, every year. And that's how he came about living in Alaska. Of course, he met a, a nice Alaska woman. Like me. <laughs> like you. Hopefully you. <laughs> anyway, yeah. <laughs> All right, fantastic. So tell us a little bit about, before we get into the coaching, tell us a little bit about, uh, it sounded like a great story. You guys both got uh, became unemployed, and what made you decide to start a cleaning business, of all things? Um, well, I was employed on the Alaska North Slope. Uh, they have a lot of oil drilling up there, and they have housing called Man Camp. For, for their workers and, you know, people like BP, Phillips Conoco, Phillips, and Schumberger, and all of them, just a 
Kisora, they're all up there on the slope, and they have man camps, and they hire people to clean them. They hire people to cook up there and mechanics, and obviously I was a housekeeper up there, and but I've done housekeeping before that, but that was my immediate job before my I got laid off, and um, Andreas was a logger, and uh, he was, it was uh, the coming springtime, and the ground gets soft, so he was laid off um, because the ground she thought to, you know, fall the trees and whatnot, so anyway, yeah, we, uh, I just said, okay, we need something fast, <laughs> we need some income fast, and I just felt like it's something I could do, he had no experience at all on cleaning, and uh, anyway, yeah, we, I just started putting ads out on Craigslist, and there's a lot of spammers there, so beware. Uh, a lot of them aren't sincere when you get replies, but if it's a local number, you're pretty safe. So, awesome. That's, so in just a year and a half. Started coming from there. I'm sorry? Uh, it'll be two years, two years in May. Yeah, so coming up on two years, you've already gone from zero to five employees? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's growing all the time, well, constantly. Congratulations. Let's see if we can help you continue to grow. What one specific thing can I help you with today? I think that putting a contract together, you know, once you get the bid and the person says, okay, we're going to do the contract, generally it's the actual cleaning business owner or whoever you hire to write up the contract, I happen to be the person that does that, and um, just the way to set it up and to get, make sure you're covered, you know, the right information on what, you know, of course you know ahead of time what the bid's going to be and what the charge is going to be, but then they throw other stuff in there, like they want you to purchase their cleaning products, not just the tools to clean, but in the liquids or whatever, but they want the paper products and the soap products and all this added in, and I'm just not sure how to do that because I just actually got a bid today and they asked for that, <laughs> so that's my immediate need is to figure out how. I don't want to, you know, basically shoot myself in the foot and not charge enough. All right, cool. Well, let's, let's, looks like you've got two questions. And one, how to write a contract. And two, how to handle um, when the customer, and I'm assuming this is a commercial customer, some sort of a business, wants you to buy their supplies. Again. Like, like toilet paper and um, trash bags and uh, like hand soap, all that stuff. Mm hmm. Okay, cool. Well, let's take that one first because that's kind of the easy one. Um, the good news is we're in business just like anybody else. So you're going to want to buy wholesale and sell retail just like cars or, you know, you know, soap or tables or chairs, whatever you buy, they're going to buy it wholesale. You know, the, uh, they don't make the product, you know, generally if you go to into, you know, some furniture store, they haven't made that product. They bought it wholesale from a wholesaler distributor, marked it up and displayed it nicely and sold it to you for more. So we're going to do exactly the same thing as janitors. And that's a great opportunity to do so. Um, and there's a couple ways you can do it. I always recommend talking to your supplier. Um, when you go buy, they should tell you, here's what the wholesale price is. And here's what the retail price is. And that's a good uh, that's a good starting point in terms of if you can buy at wholesale and just charge them retail. Oftentimes, with a good supplier, they're going to give you both of those figures, so you can start there and add a little if you like, or give a little discount if you like. But that's a great starting point. Uh, if you don't have that relationship with your supplier, you really, really should. If you're going to be uh, you know buying and selling materials, you have to have a supplier you trust, right? You don't want to go to to Target or some kind of retail establishment and try and mark that up. Um, especially if they just see, you know, it's from Costco, you want actual commercial grade stuff that's coming from a distributor. So first and foremost, find yourself a distributor. And that's a good piece of advice, uh, no matter what, that's just good because the distributors or the janitorial supply companies in your town, oftentimes are going to know when talent becomes available. They're going to know when accounts become available. 
Um, they're going to be able to offer training on how to clean stuff, how to use equipment. If you want to do, you know, like get into floor cleaning or carpets, they can train you. So they can be a really, if you, if you need a contract, um, you know, I, I would actually recommend if you don't have a template yet or a contract that you use, you can go to the internet, but I'd start with your local cleaning supplier because he's local and he knows kind of what's going on and what's acceptable in your town. So I guess the short answer is go to your cleaning supplier, ask him or her or them. If you don't have that relationship, just pick a percentage and mark it up. Just say, you know, 20%. That's probably where I'd start and just say, if I buy it for a hundred bucks uh, a case, I'm selling it for 120 a case. That's that's the cost of the markup. So does that help you on the how to purchase supplies and what to charge and how to work that out uh, for the business? Absolutely. Okay. I never would have thought of most of that. So. <laughs> that is why I'm here, my friend. So that's the easy part. Let's talk about, it's not hard, but let's talk about the more complex part, the contract. So a couple things. I'll give you a little bit of philosophy first, and then we'll get into tactical. So the philosophy for me, the way I run my companies, um, is when I am doing a contract, generally the contract is not a legal document in that ideally you're not going to go to court, right? If you're charging 500 bucks a month to clean these people's area, there's generally not going to be something where they sue you and the contract's going to be held up and their lawyers are going to study it and your lawyers are going to study it and the judge is going to make some... That's just not going to happen, right? Either they'll pay you or they won't. Either you'll clean for them or you won't. And at some point, they'll stop paying and you'll stop cleaning. And I, I, you know, if it's less than probably five, six grand a month, I can't imagine an instance where that would go to court. So understand how the contract's going to be used. If it's never going to be used in a court situation, don't pay a lawyer two, three, four, five grand to put together this monster contract that's got all these hard to understand words that makes your customers uncomfortable and makes you uncomfortable because you don't understand it. A lawyer is really going to, a good lawyer is going to do his best or her best to protect you in court. But generally for cleaning companies, and I'm assuming the contracts you're writing are you know under a thousand bucks a month. Is that fair? This one's 2000 a month. Okay. Um, so that's larger, but generally not one that someone's going to go to court for, right? Because, you know, the most they're going to probably get backwards with you is 2000 bucks, And if you sued them, that would be kind of a small claims court thing. So all that to say, if I don't have to, if I can absolutely avoid it, I make the contract almost another marketing document, right? I'm not looking to sue somebody or ideally be sued. And I never had that issue in, in certainly in my cleaning business. Um, so I'm going to make it as a marketing document. I'm going to make it easy to read. I'm going to make put my core values all over it, what I believe and and who I am, and a lot of the reasons, kind of reinforcing why they're why they chose us and what kind of fantastic service we're gonna we're gonna provide. That's the kind of things I try to put in the contract. So first, I use a template, and I would go to my uh, cleaning supplier to get that. Second, I would cross out all the legal ease that makes no sense unless again, if you've got a twenty thousand dollar a month contract and you've got 50 employees in there and it's a big deal well then you got to figure something out but um if it's just that you know a couple thousand dollars a month you can just use a template and start there um the big things that need to be covered is how how everyone gets paid um and i've you know i always recommend getting paid up front so you know if you want me to do your your cleaning for january i need to get january first i need to have my money that way you're not constantly collecting and i always have everybody pay on the, the first of the month so there's no question i'm not having to bill this guy in the sixth and this guy in the 23rd and that guy in the 18th everybody's bills due on the first i just handle it one time at the beginning of the month so uh the key pieces that you need are when to be paid what needs to be done? You want to line that out because you know the faintest ink is better than the strongest memory. So you know, three months down the road, they're going to go. You said you're going to do this. <laughs> yeah, you sound, you sound like someone that's gone through that. So yeah, three months down the road, you don't want to be in the situation of well, I said this, now I don't remember that. Blah, blah, blah. So be very clear about what you need to be done. And equally important, and you kind of touched on this, is what's not to be done. Um, so if something's not included, I try and write that out. So if they're like, oh, don't worry about this little area or don't do the floors here or that carpet doesn't need to be done, put that in the contract. So when somebody else comes in or they forget and say, oh, hey, could you just do that real quick? And you go, no, no, no. You asked me not to do that. Of course we can do it. But here's the, here's the price. Um, so again, the big thing is when you're going to get paid, what is supposed to be done, what's not supposed to be done. And then the last thing is the term. Um, all the ones I did were always month to month, and that's pretty typical, and that needs to be specified. Some people, you might say, you know, you might want to entice them with, hey, I can give you a discount if you'll sign a year contract uh, or something like that. So those are the keys. Use a template. Ideally, use your janitorial supply company. When are you going to get paid? What's supposed to be done? What's not supposed to be done? 
and um, what is the term? And you know, there might be some other stuff in there about keys or starting and stopping, um, but generally keep it as simple as possible. A lot of people want to go pay a lawyer and get a 20 page contract because they, they feel like it makes them feel special. I'd rather just have a one or two or three page contract that's very clear. It covers what needs to be covered, but there's not a lot of legal words in it. Anyone, you can read it, they can read it, everybody understands, and there's not a lot of, well, I got to get my lawyer in on this and blah, 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 blah. Does that make sense? Yeah, and probably the times that they want us to be in the building and some make the key, key handling. Yeah, I didn't go over the, I don't want to say obvious, but the kind of administrative stuff in terms of, you know, when do we get the keys and when do you get the keys back and what hours are we allowed to come? So obviously all those things kind of need to be covered. Um, and that really depends on, is it a commercial contract? Is it a residential contract? Um, so that's why you'd want to, you know, I, it's, I can't, I, didn't, I tried to give a specific, or I tried to give general concepts that work for, you know, construction cleanup or, you know, anything, residential, commercial, large, small, all that sort of stuff. Um, so again, I guess what I would do is start with your janitorial supply company, then go to our not so good friend the internet and see if there's a template on there and the worst comes the worst go to an attorney but uh, again if you can find a janitor supply company or a local you know friend that is in the business that, that you you can look at a couple contracts and just model uh, the things that you like that's probably the best way to get all that stuff covered uh, around the details in terms of keys and you know when can we come in and when can we not come in and how do we do the alarm and all that sort of nonsense uh, that, that said, said, any other questions I can answer? answer? Does that, that make sense, or do we need to fill any, any blanks in? Um, our like local cleaning janitorial say groups or support groups common because I I know there's several in this area, but we all seem to be competing, not really putting our heads together. And solving problems that we all have. Well, a couple things. Just to be clear, I wasn't saying that you would get your pricing from a, G a, a group like that. I was saying you get your pricing or a contract from your janitorial supply company, whoever you're buying the supplies from. He probably sells supplies to all of your competitors, and he's probably got a, a, a contract he can get his hands on and share with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so, so no, no, I was not intimating that you would... I mean, if you have a friend in the business that you know, you would reach out to them. But no, I'm not saying that there's a, a support group that is going to say, oh, yeah, here, let me help you, competitor. Um, without being too self-promoting, I do run a group on Facebook that's awesome. It's free to join. Um, as long as you contribute and play nice, you're welcome in the group. As long as you're owner of a cleaning company, of course. If you just go to Facebook and search Grow My Cleaning Company uh, group, uh, there's about, right now at this recording, is about 100 people in there. So that's another great place you could post. Hey, is there anyone that's got a contract? And again, I don't know that we've got any Alaskan members so far. So I don't think any of your competitors will be in there. Um, so anyone listening, go to I'm on Facebook. there. I'm on there. Oh, so are you I... on there? Well, why haven't you posted? <laughs> yeah, I'm on there. Contract? I'm on your group on Facebook. Well, how, and that, LinkedIn. Well, there's, there's, your, there's your answer, sister. If you, don't, if you don't have a janitorial supply company, you're looking for a group that's not competitive. Um reach out to him on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, well, I checked, um, I was in the yeah, group today. I definitely I don't, have, you know, questions I can share in the group. I just never have time to go on. That's a problem. <laughs> we'll make some time. <sighs> ask, the, ask the questions. And again, do both. Contribute to the group. And when other people ask and need help, jump on and give me your experience. And then the flip side, of course, when you need help, sister, come on in and, and, uh, and get some free coaching. All right. So that said, uh, that was. thank you for asking that question. I think that was a really helpful thing. I think there's a lot of cleaners out there that need that help. So hopefully that was helpful to you in Cleaning Nation. Uh, and you've earned yourself a ticket to the lightning round. Uh, as you probably know, I'm going to ask you three quick questions. You're going to give three amazing answers and then we're going to move on with our life question one what's the best piece of advice you've ever received best best piece of advice i've ever received is do unto others as you would have others do unto you that's the model i try to lead my life by hard to miss with that all right question two what's the biggest mistake you've ever made in the cleaning business so we can all laugh at you and or learn from your mistakes <laughs> Well, just, I hate it when I break things. I literally, I've dropped stuff or I've set stuff on the countertops and not on, securely, like on the flat countertop, just kind of set it on the counter and there are other things on the counter and it slid off and broke and that's, 
that's a pretty humbling thing, especially a professional cleaning person. So I just, you know, tell people to be super careful. I've, you know, the more I've cleaned, the more cautious and careful I've become because I haven't broken a lot of things, but thank God, but... Well, I got to tell you, none of that would have been broken at all if I'd been careful. If so, breaking something was the worst thing you've ever I, done, you you're doing okay, young lady. That's there's no problem with that. All right, last but not least, what's the number one most actionable item owners of cleaning companies can put into practice today to most drastically improve their lives and or their business? Mm-hmm. I have to apologize to the person I read this from because I'm I'm always reading and studying about cleaning. So I can't attribute it to any one person or group, but I read a long time ago, do something at least one time a day. And that's not, that's very easy to do. Do something every day to grow your cleaning company, whether it's post a free thing online, whether it's talking to my champion on his podcast, or whether it's, um, calling someone, trying to make a connection, ordering something to help your company, say shirts for your company or hats or whatever, or joining the Chamber of Commerce, for any, just something every day. It could be anything small to something big, and I've named small things you can do, and I've named big things you can do, and there's always something you can do when you own a cleaning business but promote yourself grow your business every day and it and you'd be amazed how much those little small things add up well said kaylin all right thank you so much for joining us thank you for sharing your passion and your desire to grow i appreciate you cleaning nation appreciates you when you want to check out caitlin's show or not caitlin caitlin's show notes page and discover everything you need to know to grow your cleaning company go to growmycleaningcompany.com leave your questions your comments your rude remarks and i will see you there congratulations you are now 16 percent smarter still can't get enough cleaning goodness Go to www.growmycleaningcompany.com for more of the good stuff. Ever want to be rich and famous? Owners of cleaning companies as well as industry experts can apply to be featured on the show by emailing our producer Natalie at support at growmycleaningcompany.com. Until then, don't miss out on all the latest cleaning industry loving at www.growmycleaningcompany.com. Check it out now.